to thank all of you for being here, and I know there's going to be opportunity for questions and also opportunity perhaps to break into some groups and talk about some of the solutions that have been presented tonight. I know that many of you came here because you've had some outrage over the situation. That outrage may be about the livestock you've lost or the pets that you've lost. It may be because you care deeply about P45 and the other mountain lions. Regardless, regardless of your reason, the solutions are the same. Nobody will ever tell you that conserving mountain lions is an easy process. This is complex, and it will take all of us to make sure that mountain lions are here for our children and grandchildren. So as you walk out the door tonight, I want you to hold on to that outrage in one hand, because that will give you the energy to make the changes that need to be made. And some of those changes um, will be things that you may not have considered doing before. So in the other hand, I really urge you to hold on to your talents because some of you can help us to change the Coastal Commission rules, which may make it more difficult for us to say, have Anatolian guard dogs in some situations, to protect mountain lions, to put up the kinds of structures that might protect the livestock that will go on to protect the wildlife that we care so deeply about. Some of you may have the talents that will help us get the legislature to change those laws so that we can give the California Department of Fish and Wildlife greater discretion. But some of you also have talents to build one of those pens, not only in your own backyard, but in your neighbor's backyard. You know, this is not a new problem. In fact, if it weren't so freezing in here, I could imagine us all sitting around a fire. But the difference is that back in the good old days, a lot of the people who were standing around the fire were shepherds. Traditional cultures care for their animals because they have to. They depend upon livestock for their livelihoods and for the survival of their children. And we need to take on that same sense of responsibility. And so to do so, we need to reach out to one another. People often ask the Mountain Lion Foundation why we work with people who not only have taken out a depredation permit on a lion, but have actually shot the lion. And the reason is because those are the people who we need to work with. And so I urge you all, all of you who live in these mountains, to reach out to your neighbors, to pass on what you learned tonight, and to try to bring the message of hope for our lions and hope for our communities in terms of their livestock and pets to everyone. And I also wanted to point out that I think this is a really exceptional meeting. I am amazed that we have such a great representation from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife here, and I think we should acknowledge their presence. It's not often that we're heard. And I think we need to give a great deal of thanks to National Parks. But finally, as you walk out the door, remember that there are nonprofit organizations like Beth's um, uh, National Wildlife Federation, who's working on the corridor, like my own organization, Mountain Lion Foundation, and many others who are able to take what we can do as individuals and amplify that, bringing our talent and our outrage together to create better communities. So thank you for being here tonight. And let's go make this a great place for mountain lions and a great place for livestock and pets.